flip. Yeah, probably just gonna stop it. Oh wow. Okay, so main camera components like to flip this for say. We do need a little bit of oil on us, so it's significantly easier to move. Right now it's pretty stiff. Pretty much you're going to push up on this side and push this hand this way to shift this down, like so. Turn it into a dinette. Turn it into a dinette. And then it slide up against that well, or it just stays back? You can move the seat forward and back. Mm -hmm. um, however, let's see if we can move all this stuff up. Mm -hmm. and so it sits right here on top of the It sits table. right there on top. You'll be able to move this around and get it there. And so it fills in and you've got... Then you have like a lounger or a, or a berth. But mainly most people will lounge here like even if you're underway and it's the seat's facing forward. People like lounging here mm -hmm. you know, underway. Okay, so they just basically put that there and like Joyce might have her feet up. Yeah, correct. Okay. That makes sense. And then if it's a berth, does this thing go flat? It does not go flat. It stays the way it is. So, so it only the berth is basically from here to here. Yes, that's it. And Unless your feet go on the other side of this, mm -hmm. then you may get a couple more inches. But really, it's for someone that's not too tall, that can maybe curl up in a ball. But remember, it's not too wide, so you, you don't want to roll off. Mm -hmm. Put this thing back up. We'll just look this up. Open back up these tabs. And just give it a little jiggle. It should come up slowly. You might have to give it a little bit. just simply lifts up if you want to get down to the panel items. Right. And you have access to, well, we are going to go all over that stuff soon, not, not at the moment, but this gives you access down there, but mm -hmm. we just simply push it back down. And if we were to open up the window, we would, okay, I'll switch places with you. We're going to open up all these tabs inside. There's four tabs. Mm -hmm. Hold the window so it doesn't shoot up. like a little safety thing here for Velcro. And then if you wanted to flip the seat, a little tab right here, we're gonna pull this tab and then move the seat, mm -hmm. well on. And then this, uh, you can't pull it towards you, you have to lift it up and then out, so up and then out. Okay. Okay, okay. push it back, but we'll leave it the way it is, we'll uh, close it back up. Questions so far? Nope. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it back in place, but you can give it a good little push, hold it, and then at least get one of them done, and then go to the other side. And there you go, and then you can put the seat back. Mm -hmm. um, out here, pretty straightforward seats, just open straight up, as so, nice and easy. 
close the side seats. And just open it out. You get two seats here, and then that seat when it's open. Mm -hmm. And then remind me what's under here. Uh, this is the, the propane locker. Gotcha. So we have space for a second one as well, do I see? Yeah. Well, there's already two tanks there. Okay. One's just shifted over. So One's the there. other one, is that where some people would keep? I guess that's just storage, period. Just storage, yeah, if you want to put a couple of things there. But, it, you know, you want to make sure you don't put any weight or anything on this valve here, the tankage, because, you know, you, you, you don't want to accidentally break it. No. Okay. Um, These things here, what am I looking at? Uh, the, the, those are rod holders. Okay. For your fishing rods. So that's where if you had a crab pot puller or something like that, that's where you stick it in? Maybe not a crab pot puller, but just a regular fishing rod. Okay. I don't know too much about uh, crab pot pullers, but uh, that would be the main spot. Uh, if you did do like um, deep sea fishing type things, or maybe even this might help out with some sort of crab trap, you can put a, a electric um, electric rod here, which you would mount right here. And the plug is right here. It's a, it's a 24 volt plug. Okay. Okay. And then you'd be able to do deep sea fishing. I would assume that's rivers. that. That's where I think we've seen yeah. the guy um, who's up in uh, Washington State. Yeah, uh, it's, there's they, they call those uh, downriggers for mm -hmm. like for deep sea fishing type stuff. Because over there, you leave the shoreline, it drops 100 feet. You know, here it's only 10. Right. So. So and when you mount something to that, it looks to me like it's basically a plastic plate that's screwed down onto the fiberglass. And I assume the idea is you lift it up, you screw something that fits it from the bottom and... Well, so, so this is fixed. This is already bolted down. Uh -huh. So when you buy any type of um, downrigger fits this template would fit on and then there's 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 little thumb screws you'd have to twist on to lock it down in place okay that's all it is so that would suggest to me that the the thing that that guy has um seems to be sitting there and i assume it, it seems like it's an electric winch for the dinghy well yeah i'm asking about for the dinghy as well in other words he's using it as i understand it to pull crab pots up i don't know how strong it is i know his dinghy I think he's just pulling it out by brute strength, but yeah. he's got it in here. We don't have any space for the dinghy. Yeah, that's right. So the issue with me would be I can either leave the dinghy inflated mm -hmm. uh, with a cover on it and just have it here mm -hmm. and shove it out after I'm underway, mm -hmm. uh, or we really don't have any other solutions, do we? At the moment, no. And, and unless you do get a dinghy cradle, you know, but that's far away. Yeah, I mean, that's eight months and God knows what price. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't given you a price yet, has he? No. Um, well, when I spoke to them, like I said, uh, they, they told me that, Ray said that they wouldn't sell it uh, with just a cradle, they'd sell you everything. Okay. They'd sell as a package. And it would be that, that big price you saw. Well, let's see. What is I'm trying to remember what that is. That's about nine thousand dollars. I thought it was higher. No, it's it's like nine and change. Give me an exact price because I may do it. Okay. Well, I can look at that. And you could always sell the dinghy that you did buy. Oh yeah, that's you know, that's I'm, minor. Okay. Um, but now, for example, for that dinghy thing, they do it on this side. If you buy the system, it comes with, a, it, it, it's a hand winch, mm -hmm. but um, it's not too hard to do, but you would simply connect the, the line and the pulley to the dinghy. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it runs through the cradle. There's a U-hook on the cradle. Yeah. You run it through that, and then it goes to the dinghy, attached to it. And then as you pull it up, the dinghy lifts up first, lays on it, and then it lifts up the whole cradle system. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, but these can be used for, for the downriggers. That's actually their main purpose. That's why they have these electric plates here. Okay. Little electric plugs. And then down below here, as I recall, we have the generator sitting under this lazarette. Correct, yeah. It takes up about this much space. 
And then there's really no storage around that. No, there's no storage around it. It's only storage on the sides. That one's very minimal. You only have storage about half the compartment back. And this one you have a giant water heater here and a battery back there. So there's only a little bit of storage. Okay. There's no water. And second refrigerator here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if the boat is if I understand correctly, if I'm if the boat's in the water and it's not sitting on a lift, even if it's connected to shore power, I would assume normally I would turn all the the DC masters off, everything? Yeah, well yeah, I, I recommend turning any everything off that you're not using. I definitely have the battery charger on. Mm -hmm. the charge batteries. But yeah, I always recommend turning everything off you're not using. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's on a trailer, again, the same thing. Turn everything off. Turn everything off, and you pull the, the drain plug in the back. Pull the drain plug, yeah, that's right. I'm sure somebody has lost a drain plug somewhere along the line. Where do you get a new one if you need it? Case Hardware or Walmart. They sell them, mm -hmm. and they're all sort of universal. Well, yeah, they have like three different sizes. Mm -hmm. to, which, I mean, if you go to Walmart, they're only like five bucks, so you always get all three sizes. Okay. If you go to West Marine, it costs you a little bit of an arm and a leg. But, Got it. But um, yeah, there's a specific size. Um, well, I'm out here. The other thing is the grill. The grill, as I recall, works with shore power and with generator. And with generator, that's right. And it's electric. Mm -hmm. You've got it stored somewhere, and you drop it. You pull it out, plug it in, and then drop it into place, and it, the seat comes up and out of the way. And well, then, the, well, the seat stays where it is, but the, the grill would simply just be sitting right here, mm -hmm. and you'd be able to grill here, and the plug runs through, or the, the plug runs through the side here. You would unscrew this little thing, it just mm -hmm. twist off. And you would run the cord through there, and then the plug plugs in straight in here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if the boat's on a trailer, I recommend not only turning everything off, but if for any amount of time it's on a trailer, especially if it's under shade or something, I recommend pulling uh, the the hot fuses like the bilge pumps and the CO monitors, because there's no reason to have those in, because those constantly run power. Mm -hmm. So if you come back in six to eight months from now, there's a chance the boat batteries could be dead, mm -hmm. you know, or even sooner if there's, a, if there's a leak in the electricity. So when you say pull them, you mean pull the... The actual fuses, okay. which, are, which are down here in this little area. Mm -hmm. This plate comes up. You'll see like there, there's little fuses down there, like the bilge pump, bilge pump, CO monitor. I recommend pulling those things because these are hot 24 seven, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Any questions so far? Nope. components and operation of the sink, stove, refrigerator, microwave. So this is a couple different topics here. There's items that are DC powered and there's items that are alternating current powered. Do you understand the difference between DC and AC? Yes. Okay. So, so one works off of the battery and will drain your house batteries. That's right. Uh, on the other hand, I assume that if you're on generator, power is being, it's not draining the batteries if you're running the generator. Yep, that's right. You're burning gasoline, but... That's right. Um, also, you have a good amount of, you know, amperage hour bank, so, you know, it's not going to drain them fast. Um, but one of the easiest ways I like to tell people is that if, if you look at this panel, this alternating current panel, anything you see on there is alternating current. Anything that's not on there is DC. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we don't see a refrigerator on there. We don't see electronics on there. We just see starboard outlets, port outlets, battery charger, Microwave, grill, water heater, and air conditioning. Those are all alternating current items. Hang on a sec. Okay. This thing went crazy. Let me just see why. So the easy way I like to do is to say that uh, the items on that alternating current panel are, you know, alternating current items like the starboard outlets, port outlets, battery charger, microwave, grill, 
water heater, and air conditioning. These three switches are nothing. They're not wired or anything. But uh, anything that's not on that panel is DC powered, so we don't see refrigerator on there. We don't see our electronics. We don't see lights. So anything not on there is directly tied to this house battery switch. So if you want the refrigerator on, you got to turn on this house battery switch. If you want to turn on the lights, electronics, you have to turn on this house battery switch. If you want to use the fresh water on the boat, you have to turn on this house battery switch. Uh, now, anything that's not on this, the only two items that are not on the house battery switch are the engine and the bow thruster. The bow thruster has its own battery switch, which is in that lazarette compartment, which we will go over soon. And the engine is tied to this battery switch. Okay? Okay. So normally, the first thing you do when you leave the boat is turn those switches off. Correct. Now, it, it, if, um, well, I would turn off the engine battery switch, the thruster battery switch. The house can stay on depending, uh, like if the boat's in the water and you want to leave the refrigerator running, it's okay to leave that battery switch on. Just make sure you turn off anything else you don't want on. Mm -hmm. You know, like you want to come on the boat and have cool drinks all the time, then you could leave that on. Sure. Okay. Um, any questions so far? No. So in other words, normally the way we would use the boat is we wouldn't leave anything in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. We would remove that. Yeah. And we would um, certainly not leave the air conditioning running if we're not here. That's right. So I'm assuming that we basically flip all those fuses off and we would turn those two batteries off. I know what the red one is, which is the it's parallel. It's emergency parallel, yeah. Yep. So we turn those off. That's correct. As we're leaving and turn them on as we're coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, that's right. We are gonna go over the other things. But while uh, we were in that topic of going over um, operation of these items, so for example, to use a sink on the boat, we may not have water. So let's see here. We do have water, okay. So if you wanted to use any sink on the boat, you do have to have one, the water is DC powered because it's not on the oil train current panel, it's by itself. Um, it's 12 volt. So to use that, we just simply turn on the water pump and then we would have water on the roof. Okay. Yep. And this works the same way on all the sinks this sink, that sink, and I think that's it. Uh, you do have a Let's uh, go on back to the swim platform. Uh, that, that water needs a cap full of bleach and some measly kegs. Let's go back here and show you this. So you have a little swim platform shower back here. Is up. My kids are coming down, not this week, but next week. So it'd be good to... Oh, that's good. That's good. I'll be, I, I'm around that weekend. I don't have my daughter that weekend, so if you need me to come do a couple of things, you have me just come along. Be great. Uh, okay. Any questions about the sink? Nope. Okay, we're going to go over the refrigerator. Refrigerator's DC powered. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a little switch inside of here. It goes from zero to seven. If it's on zero, it's off seven on at coldest. Yep. But uh, it is operational. We'll actually leave it on for a little bit. It's good to keep these things running. Microwave. Microwave is alternating current. So as long as we are on, we're going to go over inverter, generator, and future. Mm -hmm. As long as we are on shore power, generator, or inverter, the microwave is a not a high-powered item that all those items can operate. In, okay. Okay. But um, as you can see, we're on shore power and the light's green, so we can turn on our microwave and we would be able to hear the thing come on and you just push a button and. Uh, mm -hmm works as it should okay just like I said if we're not using it I always recommend to turn those items off sure uh, let's see the stove which again... that's our next one okay so, so stove is not any type of electric it is uh, all um, LPG yeah it is all propane so. so to do this Let's um, go to the back of the boat first. Make sure, I, I believe the tank's open. But, and if it is open, should always close it. Okay. Check this out. Okay. 
this propane detector sensor is actually behind there and a little bit down. And if the battery batteries from batteries are charging, they emit fumes. And this thing picks up those fumes and the alarm will go off from battery fumes. Not something you smell, um, but it does. Go, it can go off if the boat's closed and the battery charger's on. And after a couple of days, it sometimes does go off. Um, but once the battery change, we'll see if it still does it. But um, has a mind of its own. But even um, so, you pull the fuse, and I assume the fuse is in here. Down there, yeah. Yep. Um, but that's on. So let's come back here. Tank, tank is already open. You can see we do have pressure on that gauge. So let's go back inside. There shouldn't be much to do. And to look at this thing here, we have the propane fume detector. And there's a couple things here. There's okay light, fault light, danger light, and a valve light. Um, we can run it through a safety check, and it'll tell you everything's okay. And then to open the valve, we have to push the valve button. And you can hear the solenoid open, and now the valve is green. Mm -hmm. So now that means that we have power to it, and I typically like to let the, the fuel come through a little bit. Let's try the other one, the big one. There we go. Mm -hmm. And hold it for a couple seconds and slowly let go. Other one. There we go. And let go. And voila. And you can adjust the way it comes out by pulling it down a little bit or more. Okay. okay. And then there are pot grippers, I think. If there I remember. is, yeah, they are they are somewhere here on the boat. I, I, seen them. I think they may be down below if here. Not, if not, I, I have a bunch of spares in my office, but they are somewhere. Um, but that's the top part, so let's um, turn that off and uh, open this up. This thing's interesting because it actually um, ignites from the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, Unless you're doing boil, then it ignites from the top. But uh, you can sort of see the reflection. If you look here, you can, it's sort of like a mirror. You can see where it comes out way down there. Mm -hmm. and, and it is uh, lit. Okay. Now, I, I'm a Boy Scout, so I have a way of doing this. I don't turn off the valve here. I actually go back there and I close the valve, and then I come back and turn this off to mm -hmm. get all the... Now, people, there's a lot of people that will tell you, when you close the valve here, the fumes dis like go away in the line. And maybe that's true, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know who to believe. So I like to believe in the old school way of, just like when I was grilling, I would turn off the valve. Pressure go down. Eventually, this should stop. And it has stopped. Turn it off. And then we can reclose the valve. And there you go. Okay. okay. Any questions? Nope. So let's go down to the head. All right. Uh, just like before, um, sink is used with fresh water as well as a shower. I did turn the thing off. But the way the sink works, the sink has to be on, and then you would open uh, this thing up, and then the water would stop there, but start flowing out of here. Mm -hmm. right. And push the toilet. Um, there is a Y valve back there. I have it switched to fresh water. I like, well, even though the fresh water stinks, but it's better than using salt water. Um, and you would simply just push this button. Again, house battery powered. I, I 
have to have the water pump on, which I think I do. Let me squeeze by you. I'll go turn that thing on. So you just turn the water pump on. Yeah, because I have it on fresh water side, so I think I need to have that pump on. I believe so. try one more thing. Okay. I'm going to go all the way back to the cock. It was on salt water side, but the salt water side was not primed. But I would rather try the fresh water side. That is added aftermarket, by the way. That, that valve. Which is a luxury to have. A lot of people like to use fresh water. <laughs> So, I, I'm used to hearing kind of a vacuum. Whoosh. Yeah, these are not vacuum fields. These are electric toilets. Well, there's a macerator on them. So, so I'm hearing the macerator. Correct, yeah. When you're flushing, you're hearing the grinder down there work. But that thing has the ability to suck solid matter down. Yeah, it does. Yeah, well, the macerator is right there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 it crushes everything out. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, it, it works. And then to try to get the water down, I typically just do this. I'll, I'll give it a, a quick push. Try to get the water down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, Any questions? Oh, back to the shower. Turn that on. Turn that on, now you got water coming out of the shower. Got it. And you've got that shower curtain up here, and that wand attaches up here. Right here yeah. That's right. And the shower goes around right here? Yep. That's correct. Okay. Questions? Uh, nope. Oh, your toilet paper water is in here. A couple miscellaneous there. And that's just access to the lines. Oh, you probably were here, you are. Other few things are here, like and it's all labeled. Uh, everything you there's another label, but it tells you 12 volt outlet, 12 volt outlet room, 12 volt outlet quarter berth, blowers, toilet switch, trim tabs. But everything is just all. So these are all little fuses that could blow. Correct. Yeah. And um, where do you buy those fuses? Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, if you go to the store, they're outrageously priced. But if you go to Amazon, you can get a big 50 or 100 pack of all assorted different ones for 15 bucks. Okay. Um, well, here, this is the, the windless fuse. It's it's not a fuse. It's a it's a thermal breaker. Um, so if this is popped for say where that's down, the windless will not work. Um, and you have to make sure this is pushed up in place. We actually pop that purposely at boat shows and stuff so kids don't drop the anchor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is like your NMEA 2000 backbone network. Like you can see, everything's connected. The Yamaha, the GMC 20 reactor, the GPS and me, VHF, and the reactor 40. You see, everything's all connected in, in one big thing. What is the reactor 40? Uh, the reactor 40, I believe that is the. It's some sort of. Um, what is that again? 
it has to do something with like it's not GPS, but it's something like that has to do with it. It's a good question. Though. <laughs> That's what I normally do. Sorry, it's the Hydraulic Autopilot Core Pack. Got it. So something completely different than what I thought. Any questions? Nope. Okay. And that just clicks back in place. Okay, so again, at this point, no showers taken because that bilge pump isn't working. So those are working, yeah. That's on my, that's on my list this week. Okay. As well as our change in the other Okay. Battery locations of the house, engine, and thruster. The type and maintenance. Battery switch locations. And you know, I have a voltmeter. House breaker locations. Operation. Fuse packages. Okay. Uh, so we'll backtrack. I was going to say 12 volt outlets. You don't have 12 volt outlets on this boat. You have USBs. There's some here. Mm -hmm. okay. There's some more over here by the captain. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there is. Oh, and then there's one right here. Mm -hmm. As well as there's an outlet there. And there's an outlet in the head on the wall. Mm -hmm. You have the outlet over here. Okay. Yep. And then there is an outlet right there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about the fuse panel location behind the dash panel. Mm -hmm. okay. And as you can lightly see, there's already a couple spare fuses here. Might give me your phone. We'll show this to you. If we were to look all the way down here, we have two fuse boxes and a giant house breaker. It's a 175 amp breaker, and that's the location of those items. Uh, that 175 amp breaker is a push one, just like the thermal breaker for the windlass. Mm -hmm. And then you have a bunch of little fuses. voltmeter most of our boats they don't put them on anymore but you do have this we'll go over this in the future but this is a solar controller mm -hmm. what this does is you have the solar panel that comes in there's a hot lead and a negative lead that run down there's a solar actual solar controller box I believe it's on the starboard side Lazarette box it goes to that box and then gets dispersed to the house battery bank the engine battery and then there's a little controller that runs all the way up to this thing it's just like a little meter to show you what it's doing. Mm -hmm. So there's a picture of a battery one, a battery two, and a solar panel. There's a next button. If you click the next button, you can see the solar panel is receiving 20.3 volts, 2.3 amps. Battery bank one is 13.6 volts, and battery bank two is 13.5 volts. So you don't have a voltmeter on the boat, but you have this thing, which is the same thing as a voltmeter, because you can read the battery bank voltage of battery bank one and two. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? Nope. There is no settings to change in here, nothing to do. It does its own thing. There's no, no, nothing to change or do with that solar system. Okay. Okay. So now we'll go to the back. I'll close that center compartment and open up the other ones. By the way, are there any through holes in here that I should know about? There's two through holes. And those are those green things. If you see the, the bilge pump in the middle yep. with the red cap, the through holes are on the sides of those. The one on the starboard side goes around to that big sea strainer. Mm -hmm. The other one goes to the little sea strainer and then goes to the air conditioning water pump. Now I'm assuming those sea strainers periodically get clogged up. They can, that's right. So the idea of, of cleaning them out, mm -hmm. do you close the through holes with the motor off? Is that the idea first? 
and you close the through holes. If you want to clean the air conditioning one, you'll want to turn off the air conditioning pump. Mm -hmm. well, here, I'll, I'll show you. Let's turn it off. Turn off the air conditioning. Here on this little panel, we don't see anything right now. You got to touch a button and it comes back up. We're going to push the power button. And that's the air conditioning control. That turns off the air conditioning. But we also want to turn off the air conditioning here at the panel. Okay. And you'll hear the pump turn off. Yep. Okay. So now let's go back here. This isn't the easiest thing to get to. They make it a little difficult because it's so far back. But we can do anything. And I, I, I always recommend um, uh, um, having some sort of cushion for your knees. I don't have one, but for future reference. And if we were on that side, it may be easier. It may, may not be easier. Lay on top of the generator, it won't hurt you. So, you want to close like the through hole, per se. Mm -hmm. This one will close it to, to the side. Like that. And left one, Lucy. And you can see it looks dirty, but it isn't. There's really nothing in there. Mm -hmm. But typically, you would just take this out, you know, strain it. You could take out this cover, clean it with the water hose. Push it in. back up, loosen it again, because you want to get the air and the water out of it, well, the air out of it and prime it with water, close it back up and you're good to go. For the big one here, same thing, we're going to close the valve, this one's a little bit easier. Just twist the top, the whole thing will move. See, the strainer is nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Well, a little green, but isn't dirty. Put it right back. Twist it down. Tilt it tight. Open the valve back up. There we go. See, so just open up a little bit to. Yeah, to, to get the air out the system, that's all. Mm -hmm. and, now, and now we have some water in the bilge, I'm assuming. There will always be, so if you can look at the bilge pump, you see the, the very bottom of the blue? Mm -hmm. That bilge pump will only suck out water if, it's a, if, it's a, if that blue is completely covered with water. If that blue is not, if, that, if the water's you know, quarter way of the blue, midway of the blue, if there's air in it, it won't suck it out. So you'll always have water in the bilge unless you fully clean it out with like a, a sponge or a rag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, this stuff we're going to go over soon. If we manually hit the bilge pump, would it pull it out or? Yeah, it can pull out some. Got it. Let's see. That's up at the dash. You can hear how there's you know air running through it. Yeah. This isn't fully covered. Close this thing up. Okay, let me turn back on the AC. Because sometimes it's not in, and they can take up to, to four minutes. So you okay. just said when we turn on the AC, it's imperative we make sure it's spinning water. Make sure it's Which is water. over here. Yep. Yeah. Forward. Because yeah. that's the, is the water. That's the cooling system for the air conditioning is the water. items in here. Okay, let me just set this thing off to the side. Uh, we have the water heater here. There's a mixing valve on here. You can make it colder or hotter, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, on the bulkhead here, we have our battery charger. It's a 20 amp battery charger. And you can see it's on because it's a little hard to see, but the screen is lit and assisted batteries are full. Okay. Is it a bad idea to have that gas tank in there with that water heater and the battery charger? You could be right. I, I haven't think... had any issue yet, but it probably is a bad idea. We could probably put, we could probably just sit it out here. Probably not a bad idea. It's probably a good idea. Um, okay. Uh, that's the new engine battery I put in. It is a interstate battery. That is the emergency manual bilge pump. That's a fantastic idea. Um, you can see on the wall here we have the autopilot pump, mm -hmm. which is that cylinder thing. This is like the, uh, the NMEA 2000 connection where a lot of things connect together. It's another one. And you talking about that black tube there? This, this big cylinder thing on the wall? The oh, okay, pilot. got it. Hydraulics. And yeah, it automatically steers both. And then that box here, this is the NMEA 2000 uh, uh, backbone connections. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. Nope. Well, just so you know, I, I am going to be putting a different battery in there. I put this battery in because when I wanted it was out of stock, but mm -hmm. I ordered it, but I wanted to change it for now. Mm -hmm. But I also don't mind having a second battery in my office as a backup, so I just put that one in for now. Okay. But that's more than sufficient, it's the right one. Um, that is a, a, a fantastic cranking battery. However, I am going to be putting in a deep cycle battery, which gives you the option for, say, if your house batteries are flat dead or something and you needed to pull power, if you back paralleled from the engine over, you wouldn't have to worry about the battery dying. The deep cycle battery has a, an amp average that this one doesn't have. So, okay. All right. But uh, that's just me doing that. Most people do put that one in, but um, I'm the type of person that likes to do a couple things differently. And that battery in there is better than the one that was there. Much better than the Centennial battery. Try to fold this back a little scrape as it did in the past. Okay. So we have our oven root that's sitting there. We have our little engine here. There's a couple items in here. We have two house batteries right here. Okay, one, two, and then the thruster battery is in front of it. Okay. So it's it's access through there, but it's sitting underneath where the refrigerator is. Yeah, you have to pull out one battery at a time. Mm -hmm. so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it is uh, doable. And um, on the bulkhead here, if you look real closely, it's a little hard to see. But you have a couple battery switches here. There's a battery switch here, and then there's a battery switch here. Mm -hmm. You can see this one is right next to the inverter label. Mm -hmm. This is the inverter battery switch. This is the thruster battery switch. The inverter battery switch I leave on at all times. There's no need to turn off because you can turn it on and off inside the boat. Okay. Thruster battery switch, however, if we're not using the boat, I always recommend you turn this off. But it's also a good thing for you to come down here. It's like a checklist. It's good to down come down here and look at these things before you take off anyway. Okay. Do you have a checklist, by the way? I don't necessarily have a checklist, but I can sure make you one. That would be good. I know I have one from a different boat that I can modify and make it like. Um, on the wall here, you have there's two black boxes. Those are called automatic charging relays. What those do is uh, the power from the battery charger comes to those charging relays and then gets dispersed to the batteries. In the in the in the field that if the battery charger was to fail and was to start overcharging the batteries, those things would automatically kill the power or make a star makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, there's nothing down here just besides the two house batteries and the thruster battery. And um, you do have this big house fuse right here. It's a 200, I believe that's a 250 amp fuse. The thruster is 150 amp fuse. And those are fuses if they blow. You got to change it, yeah. And, and there's a, a spare parts list for the boat if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope.
batteries are all sealed batteries the even the new ones are sealed batteries that battery is it is a lead acid a battery it is when you filled water the new one I'm putting in is a deep cycle so it's it's sealed there's you know you don't have to put any water but that one is new are most AGMs uh, sealed or are they open most AGMs are sealed yeah okay lighting um, so again as long as the house battery switch is on we have power to all these things so two switches here one is for the cockpit lighting you see there's like little amber lights mm -hmm. I believe there's well, there was amber lights in the back but they're burnt out but the you have the amber lights that run across the undersided boat through here you can see them look real uh, pretty on both sides at night this boat is completely lit up like a Christmas tree okay the ones that are burned out, what has to be done there? Yeah, they need to be changed. They're on the swim platform, so when salt, when you bring the boat off plane, you know, the water comes up over the swim platform, it goes in those lights and just burns them out. It's pretty common. This one, hey, how you doing? Doing all right. But, uh, this one isn't burned out. It, it's just that one over there, but that one's probably getting close to burn out. But finding those lights are a little bit of a pain. I have to get them for that boat, and I, I, I order them, but... Uh, they didn't have the amber color, they had blue, so I, I didn't put them on because it's going to look cheesy because everything else is amber. Um, the other light switch is the blue underwater lights, okay, which we can't see now because it's daylight. And if we make our way back inside, remind me, are there, is there any light out here at night? No, just, just these side amber lights. Okay. Um, longer the AC runs, the colder it gets. Hasn't been ran in a while. Um, these two switches here, we turn them off and, and we look up. One of these lights is for the LED lights above us. Mm -hmm. And the other one is for the courtesy lighting here. It's that pretty LED lighting strips. They run on both sides. And we do have little reading lamps. We push them in, they work. I do leave these windows open, um, like especially my boat lift or even if it's just in the water. I leave these cracked if I'm not on the boat, because if it, if it rains, the water's not, this is slope, so the rain's not going to go in here, but it sort of like keeps the boat from getting a lot of humidity inside. You can put a humidifier inside, but sometimes I just open up. That's only when you're underway. No, you want to put in here. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. It, it, unless we have some sort of hurricane and the, the, the water's coming from the from the side. But uh, I typically, even on my trailers, if they're on the sides of the boats, I, so I crack them open. Um, but inside here, we have our reading lamps on both sides. Come down and take a look. lamps are two-way reading lamps. You got one light. You turn it again. You got a, the top light. Same thing on the other side. And there is uh, two on the sides here. And then for the head, the light switch is uh, on the wall. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope. thing is you're going to push this way, put your hand under here, and pull the seat up. Once we get some WD-40 silicone, it'll work a whole lot better. So we have a couple things here. Um, 
again, all these things are all DC powered because you can turn them on directly with the item. Um, first one is navigation anchor lights. One way, it's, this is a three way switch. So if we go left, left is, you can tell is your navigation lights because everything illuminates red. Just mm -hmm. like driving a car, it's like your dashboard's lit when your lights are on. Middle is off, and right is just, just anchor light. Okay. Okay. Chart lights are the red lights above us, which is good for reading maps at night. Um, this is the manual aft bilge pump switch, the manual forward bilge pump switch, and the manual bow bilge pump switch. Aft and forward are in the back of the boat. The aft one was the one all the way in the back, and the forward one, one was in front of the generator. Bow bilge pump is directly down here. Okay. How would you access that? The bow one? Mm -hmm. Now the little floorboard comes up. This is how I, I, I have to change the uh, the actual um, the sump pump boxes right there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you have a bow bilge pump and your transducer. Okay. And this is that clip the guy was talking about. You can see there, there's there's one clip here and the other one's missing. Macerator. This is if you want to macerate and discharge your waste overboard. It's a it's a push and hold button, so you have to push and hold it. Um, but to let's um, backtrack. Since we're on that topic, we're going to backtrack. So we're going to open this up. No, we're not. Wrong one. Open this one. And here, let me hold your phone. I'll show you. All the way on the bulkhead here, there is a green, a green valve, and that is the macerator valve. If we would like to discharge our waste overboard, that valve has to be open. But a Coast Guard regulation has to be closed at all times, of course. Uh, but that's if you want to macerate overboard on the Gulf Coast, you have to be seven miles offshore, I believe. I think on the other coast, it's three miles. But you don't have to open the valve, push and hold, and it'll discharge overboard. Uh, fan and accessory switch, these are dead switches, they don't do anything. Um, horn, here are horn. We have our windlass switch here. Um, puts the anchor down and up. And, uh, works as it should. Uh, wipers. Question so far? Nope. Uh, this is our Garmin autopilot screen. We're going to get more into this when we go out on the water. Uh, this is our main navigation screen. We have our Yamaha engine screen right here. We have our bow thruster control to operate the bow thruster. The bow thruster battery switch has to be on, which is in the port side lazarette. And and then we would push in this little switch, and then we would have power to it, and then be able to use it. We're going to get more into this. Uh, VHF, there's a power button here, the little red power button. We'll push and hold that to turn it on. It's going to beep at you, telling you there's no MMSI number inside of it. Push the no button. You can get an MMSI number. You just have to go on boatus.com. You put in your boat information. It's a free thing to get. They give you the number, you implement it in here. If you ever have to push the distress button, the Coast Guard knows everything about you without having to talk to you. Okay. You turn it off. Throttle control. These are the trim tabs here. These are only used when the boat's up on plane. You know, it can adjust the way the boat leans. And then ignition control. We're going to get more into this stuff, I just want to turn it on so you can see it. Mm -hmm. I know you want to remember, does the radar work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. This is the radio control here, we'll get more into that. But any questions so far? Nope. Okay. Next section is AC electrical. Um, do you have questions about connecting the short power plug? No, I mean, I'm familiar with the basics. Um, okay. These short power plugs, well, just like any 30 amp, you want to make sure that you 
magnetic. It only goes in one way. Yeah, and you push you it in, you want to twist it to the right. And you don't want to cross thread that stuff on the boat, so sometimes you want to go backwards to sit it in the right place and then tighten it. You know, because it's all plastic, so. But let's keep on going back. ELCI breaker location and operation. Uh, shore power rotary switch. This boat does not have a rotary switch, it has a bar. Shore power versus inv inverter, shore power versus generator, and all the outlet locations. I think I showed you the outlet locations. Mm -hmm. right, one there, one there, one down in the curve down to the left, and one in the head. Um, so the ELCI breaker is um, this thing right here. It's a ground fault sensing module. So when the shore power, which plugs in right there underneath that side cushion, where it goes, when the shore power runs in through there, it goes to this ELCI breaker right here, okay? Once it passes the ELCI breaker, it goes to the actual shore power breaker on the on the 120 volt panel, okay? If there was an issue with this ELCI breaker, it would fall, it would flash red. That means that there's neither the connection is messed up on the dock or the boat, or there's an issue with the power coming into the boat. Um, but also, if you don't put that connection on right, where it's just sitting in there, you can um, you can cause the connections to arc and actually burn and catch fire if you don't push it in all the way or do it correctly. Um, okay. And okay, that's why the guy on Cutwater put in the smart plug, right? Smart smart plugs are nice. I I I'm not a big fan of them. I actually like the standard plug. As long as you do it right, you, you know, there's nothing to go wrong with. If a smart plug messes up on you, it's, it's more expensive than, than these things. Okay. Um, so we have, right now, run shore power. We got the battery charge running, air conditioning. We are going to temporarily turn off the air conditioning by pushing this. It, the screen dismutates, goes away, but if you push it again, it turns it off. It will turn off the actual air conditioning. It will turn off the battery charger and shore power, okay? To turn on the inverter on the boat, you have to push and hold this little power button right here, and you can see it's labeled inverter. Somebody somebody labeled this. This is the power switch for the inverter. You'll hear it turn on, and you'll hear the audible beep and the green light turn on. And now you can see the inverter is lit on the panel, the little green light over there, okay? And if we wanted to turn on that inverter, we would just flip this bar. This bar is in place to make sure you don't turn on more than one thing. Okay, so we have to push this up, turn the inverter on. Now the boat is running off of inverter power. I.e. battery. <clears throat> battery power, correct. So now we can use, like for say, you know, our microwave or our outlets. Those are the only items I permit anybody to use off the inverter. You can't, you can't power your grill. You can't power the battery charger. That, 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 that you're just recycling power. But the grill water heater, air, air conditioning, those items are way too big for the system. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they drain the battery down. Okay. But inverter only, microwave, or outlets, that's okay. it. And we can turn it off, and we can turn off our inverter, and then we can return on our short power, our battery charger, and our air conditioning. You'll hear the screen beep, but you still gotta push the power once, and then again, and you'll hear the beep. And uh, if you look closely at it, here, let me see your camera. If you look close, slide it out of the track neither one way or the other way, that's all. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, if you can get this place, there's a nice canvas shop here local. You bring the same thing there, and either he can patch us up or fix it, or he can replace you a whole new one at a very low cost. Okay. Like, I, I've taken the things there where he re sews and stitches the whole thing because the Velcro's coming off. And he charges like 60 bucks. It's okay. very, very inexpensive. Any questions? No. Out of curiosity, who is that? That's okay. Who's the uh, the canvas guy you're talking about? I uh, just up the street right here on the right on the main street here. If you if you actually uh, go straight, mm -hmm. you go you go past Sutton Park. Mm -hmm. On your left, there's a little building, and then another little building. The little building you'll see on the window it says computer repair. It's inside of there. He used to do computer repair ages ago. Now he does. And then he did canvas for a long time. Now he does um, like small swamp 
mud runner boats or, mm -hmm. or engines for like the swamp guys. Mm -hmm. But he's a trades guy, so he does like five different things, but one of them is canvas. There you go. So he doesn't advertise for it, but he does it. Okay. Any questions about shore power or nope. AC electrical? Okay. Um, the inverter location on this boat is nearly impossible to get to. I believe. The, the inverter is actually behind this whole panel. Mm -hmm. It's something pretty difficult to get to. And the inverter is powered off the house batteries when you're using it. Okay. Now the inverter battery switch was in the port side lazarette hatch. There's a fuse next to it, if that ever pops. The charge relays, as we discussed, were also in that port side lazarette compartment towards the aft. And, okay, let's go outside the boat. section is like a fuel. Fuel fill is right here. Mm -hmm. Got a fuel here. Fuel vent is right here, this little bit. Okay. And that sort of just clicks in place to open and you push this thing in and it opens up. Um, on the, I believe everything is on the one side. If you stay here, I will show you. You can peek around the side. Let's say you wanted to pump out the waves or fill the water. There's no deck keys. You just push in the middle and the tab lifts up, but then you can simply holy smoke this way. And loosen it up and pull it out. The water one has a chain. The waste one does not have a chain. The waste one does not have a chain, so you can completely take it off to, to, to put the suction piece on top of it. Take this off, you want to make sure that you hold it. Okay. The fuel tank is directly center line of the boat, as well are the waste and water tanks, which is are in front of them. They're still centered to the boat. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Nope. Fuel tank is 150 gallons. Uh, fresh water, I believe, is either 30 or 40, as I, I think recall. It's 40. Um, but your your waste your waste tank, I think, is only like 30 gallons or something. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the mass reader valve for the waste? No. Okay. Um, where is there a? Uh, a gauge it lets me know how full the waste is there isn't one okay so every time you get fuel or um, or whenever you're in a marina it does pump out have them do it whenever they can so like here i told ed to come pump out the boat when it got here because i don't know when the last time it was pumped out and um but let's say you get gas here at the marina uh, if you could buy gas the pump out's free and if you don't not buying gas you pay like 10 bucks and you can pump it out but most marinas have pumped out some don't Let me go show you where the water pump is and the macerator pump is. Come on inside. Up these things. These four pieces come out. see, turn on my little flashlight, we have the fresh water pump right there. That's the one in front. Mm -hmm, this one, that's mm -hmm. the fresh water pump. Yep. And the one back here is, is the macerator pump. Okay. okay. Any questions? Nope. There is a little, little strainer here on the side of this that twists off. It's not for cleaning the water. The strainer is there made to uh, catch debris in the water, but it's not made for cleaning it. Okay. When you say cleaning it, you mean 
filtering crap out. Yeah, it doesn't do that. It just filters, like if you drop a piece of plastic in there, it's going to get caught in there. Sure. Yeah. And I assume that if you start getting weird behavior from the water, that's one of the places you would look. That's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're in short power, so let's actually, we are going to turn on the water heater. Test that. So we're going to turn on the water heater. And we're just going to let some, oops, sorry. Let a little bit of water run through that hot water heater. I know it smells like eggs, but we want to at least make sure everything works. Leave that the way it is. Give it about 10, 15 minutes. We'll come back and see what it feels like. Sure. Uh, the water heater was located inside the starboard yes. side lazarette hatch. There's a little valve on it to make the water hotter or colder. Propane locker was the little compartment there. We have two propane tanks in there. Currently, there is one fire extinguisher on board. Yeah, I, I have new ones for you. I have I bought uh, all safety equipment for you, so we got I've got four life jackets. There's a th there was already thrown in here. Um, the first aid kit, flare kit, and fire extinguishers. I got all the new ones for you. Okay. TV and stereo. DC powered. Mm -hmm. okay, so, not the house battery switches on, you can't do that. And we got the power button. Does it have uh, a basic antenna on it of any kind? It does, yeah. It has a, a, a little, little TV antenna. I don't know, it should get local channels around this area. Yeah, ju just uh, local channels. But you have to scan like wherever you are mm -hmm. to refigure it out. It's on HDMI, but let's switch to. Source, we'll go up to TV, and we may already have a couple things. So let's click menu and go over to channel, go down and click auto scan, start to scan, and scan. Yes, what's going on? Hello? Hey, nothing much. Uh, I'm currently doing orientation on the boat, so I'll give you a call later. Oh, let this thing scan. You guys drink coffee? Mm-hmm. There's a little Keurig coffee pot down there. Yep. I'm assuming that Jeff didn't leave any dishes or cups or anything on board, right? No, he didn't. Yeah. Whatever you saw that was here, it comes with the boat, but no, he didn't leave any of those things. I didn't expect it, but just checking because I didn't expect the pots that I saw. Yeah. I would have bought them, so just asking. Gotcha. Okay, so this thing's doing its thing. I know how this works. This um, thing? Yeah, I know what it's doing. Yeah, it's um, surprising we got 50 channels on it. There you go. Now, most of them are probably pretty scratchy, but... but yeah. Uh, not, not a big deal. Oh, that's scary. Let's run it. Do you guys listen to the radio or Bluetooth or...? Yeah, we'll probably, I would assume, run thing. If I remember correctly, this oh, has scanning. this has a, um, a radio antenna as well as Bluetooth. Turn this on. I'm going to push 
Sure. This stuff's probably for me. I have hyperhidrosis, so my hands and feet sweat pretty excessively. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get rid of it, but some pra I have it. Not a big deal. Seventy-four channels. Okay. See, so just like yeah, you can turn the volume. Or Yep. But that's um, FM radio when it goes away. If you want to go to, you can click this back arrow and then scroll to like AM, Bluetooth, you know, auxiliary. But if we click on Bluetooth, yep. TV's working. We can click this page button and then we can make it, here, let's uh, remove all these other devices that are on here. Move device, page, move device, page, move device, page. Now we can make it discoverable and then you'd be able to find it on your phone. You just got to go in your Bluetooth settings. Uh, volume, here, let's put it back to the way it was. Typically when you get on the boat, you start messing with volume. It'll, um, the volume will operate both zones. You can see the volume goes up and down on both zones. If you'd like Cock, to cockpit and inside. Cockpit, yeah, and inside salon. But if you want to do just one, you can click it again, and now we can operate just a salon. Or we could do it again, and we can turn down the cockpit or turn up the cockpit. Or you can do both again. You know? Okay. Okay. No light. So then, uh, if the light on the screen goes down, you hit the little light there. Hit the light button. And then you just adjust and it And then you can down. see if it's all the way down, you won't see nothing. But yeah, you just hit the light button and turn it up. Okay. Okay. Wait till that turns away. If you want to mute it real quick, unmute. And turn off. Push on the power button. And that'll turn off the radio. Okay. Right here. As we're sitting here, you know, you won't see anything, but if you touch a button, you'll be able to see what the current temperature inside the boat is. What we, what we have it set to is 61, but then it'll read back to you the current temperature, which is 78. And um, there's a mode button here. If we click this, we can switch between snowflake. To, to the sun, which is heat, or the glass, which is dehumidifier mode. Dehumidifier mode isn't really dehumidifier mode. There's a fan speed button, but fan speed does almost nothing. These these um, Webasto unit fan speeds just don't really work. Um, but basic temperature, and to turn on and off the unit, just push push the power button. That'll turn it off. Well, power button once turns it off if it's on. Well, if the screen's not lit, you push the power button once to turn the screen on, and then push the power button again to turn off the unit. We would turn off the air conditioning on the breaker itself, the panel, we turn it back on. We'll hear it beep and somewhat come on, but now you have to push the power button twice. Once to turn on, to illuminate the panel, or, and then again, you'll hear the audible beep and that means it's actually gonna come on. Yeah, so, and then you'd want to ensure there's water spitting overboard, but there, there should be. You want to see that wasn't weird. That's weird. Oh, oh. Well, that whole breaker pop. It's, it's probably my fault. Probably my fault for turning everything on and off so quick.
questions? No. Okay. Okay. Well, let's backtrack. We turned on the water heater five minutes ago, seven. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's hot. Turn on cold water. There we go, it's warm. Now it's getting warm. Cold water. Back to warm. And it's slowly getting warm. Yep. It needs a little bit longer though. We'll, we'll leave it on for a little bit longer. I'm going to switch places with you. I'm going to go down to the earth area and go find a couple of things. Perhaps all the uh, canvas covers down here. those canvas covers for? Those little ones are for this doorway here. Those little ones are for this doorway. So there's like a track it slides into. Uh -huh. Looks like a big door. And it just Velcros down. And then there's a top piece that Velcros. So if you want some privacy. Pretty much you just gotta 
pretty much do the puzzle. This one's for the door here. I assume the gist is that you've got these for the front as well. Yep, that's right. There, there's one for everything. This is good to keep the sun out the boat. It helps if you're at the dock, at the air conditioning running, keep the sun out. It's going to help, help the boat cool down and, and for privacy. That's the windshield now. So they can get straightened up and it's good to have the boat cover on. And this one's going to be for the windshield. If you'd like to come up, I can show you how it goes on, but I will put it up. Okay. okay. Seat cover. Seat cover. So this is the scrungy one is for the side seat. And uh, try to find, I think they're about the same size, but you obviously want to, if, I think this side's longer, you want the longer side on the bottom. So we're going to take that side, put it underneath one side of the seat, and put the other side under the other side of the seat. Lift it up like that. And like that. And voila. It may look a little funky, but that's the way it is. That's to protect that from sun Water, getting. Sun. <laughs> now we do have now this is the standard cushion. For the seat. However, Jeff made this thing to go around that seat. Mm -hmm. A little bit overkill, but uh, it works. This is the standard cover for the seat. And this cord is a couple of snaps, two snaps, top snaps, and some side snaps. Like so. Some more side snaps. There we go. To protect yeah. the little area. Cool. This one, however, this one's a pain in the butt. This one is meant to go on the side window there. Uh, Jeff did not like that, so if you remember, there was a little curtain there. Mm -hmm. That Jeff like hung there, but this is meant to go on the side of the boat. You can, you can watch me as I hang off the side of the boat and hang out with my wife. By the way, these snaps do phenomenal up in Washington State. Here in Florida, these things come off very easily in the sun. This one's came off. You can buy them on salerite.com. They're just a couple bucks for a pack of five. Yeah, about the snaps that you put Little through snaps, the, 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 the ones that, that, that stick on the window. Okay. And now if we go on the boat, it will feel a little different. It'll cool down quicker. It'll be more enjoyable. And more privacy. You're right. I will probably want to come on the boat at different points during the week just to like use as an office and, and yeah. stow things and things like that. Yeah, that's fine. You can see when everything's up, it's nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. People will actually um, cover these too. Little screens, they pop out. You can take one of these home and then you can um, cut a piece of fabric, put it in there and slide it back up in place. And that's actually really good even when the boat's underway per se. So now you don't have sun hitting you from the top. Yeah. Or you can open these hatches up and have a little bit of a breeze flow through. But it's all up to you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hydraulic steering. Hydraulic steering, there is a little cap right here. This is a self-ventilating helm station. So in a hot summer day in Florida, you may see a little bit of oil drip down. It's just ventilating because it's bubbling inside. It's normal. Uh, but also, you may need to fill that in a year from now, or maybe a couple months. And it may only need that much fluid. Are you talking about this? Mm -hmm. 
this cap comes off and then you can fill the hydraulic steering fluid. Gotcha. The way they do that, you buy, there's a little adapter that screws onto this mm -hmm. and like a little tube. And then you buy the hydraulic steering fluid and you squirt it in the tube and you turn the wheel to left to right constantly. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing that, you'll see the bubbles come out the system and the, once the fluid is, you know, where you can see it in the line where it's full, you know, you can turn it the other way, remove the line, put the cap back on and you're good to go. Okay. okay. You typically don't have to do that. You know, even if a little bit drips out of there a year, I mean, it's not affecting anything. There's still a lot of fluid in there. But eventually you're going to have to. Eventually do. you may have to top it off. Okay.